Hi, this is Albert Bouchard, and you are listening to the Brutally Delicious Podcast. Hello, Albert. Hi. Hi, how you doing? I'm Bruce. That's my partners, Rena and Chris. Hi. Hey, we got a hey. crowd here. Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thank yeah, you. Yeah, for- this is a smooth show. Oh, three hosts. <laughs> Nobody <laughs> ever talks on top of anybody. And no. like, none, of, none of that unprofessional stuff ever happens. <laughs> How are you doing? Albert? How's your day going? Good so far. It's just starting, really. <clears throat> nice. Where are you Where located? Are you New York City. Oh, okay. oh, wow. So you're starting at noon. You can't complain about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, you know, I had my breakfast. I went out for a walk. You know, yeah. Nice. I just got back from New York yesterday. So I was actually just listening to Odeed on Life, and the first thing that struck me was the um... what, Bruce? I think you're frozen. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyways, I was just listening to Odeed on Life, and the first thing that struck me was the recording quality of that track. Mm. Like, like how present it was did did you record this at home did you go to a studio how did you how did you track this this song i recorded it all at home actually yeah really wow yeah did you engineer it yourself yeah yeah i mean i <clears throat> i had uh, somebody else mix it you know i had uh, steve hardy mix that one so and he uh, he's a guy that writes for Mix Magazine. He's been around for a while. He's really good, really good. Right. But uh, yeah, I uh, I I've, after the the last record, uh, Reimagine Us, I really uh, kind of got a whole process for recording acoustic guitars and and uh, the violin and uh, and I got my vocal thing a little better better together. So uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, I, I I like I'm a recording engineer, and I was like, oh, I wonder what this will sound like, and I hit play, and I was just like, next thing I know, the song was over, and I was on to the next one, that was on YouTube, which was from your last record, I guess. Yeah, with the cool yeah. video too. That was yeah. a great video, was and um, and I was just like, my God, this sounds spectacular! Like, like it just sounded engulfing. It it almost reminded me of like a like a I don't know how to say this properly but like Pink Floydish but not Pink Floyd at the same time like it was really atmospheric but not in the sense of like delays and all this random stuff it was just atmospheric with instrumentation and arrangement well thank you I I mean Pink Floyd is like the stand the gold standard really right you know and that's I, I mean if it sounded like that it was I was trying my hardest to sound like that. <laughs> I mean, part of the thing about Pink Floyd, though, is not so much the the individual sounds. I mean, if you really dig into it, the, some of the sounds are grating and, you know, very lo-fi and weird. But it's like the space. They make this space in their arrangement. They don't clutter it with a lot of stuff. You know, that's funny that you said that because, uh, you know, I've been working with Robert Gordon on his new record. That's coming out uh, next year, and and I didn't record any of that stuff. I, you know, it's stuff that he had done before uh, we started work. I've been trying to record this guy for years, right? We wrote like forty songs, and he's always like, ah, you know, I got to use, I got to use my guy in Nashville or the, the these guys in Pennsylvania, and you know, and and they're they're professional and they're good, but uh, you know, I don't think he knew you know what i was talking about so i played him this la- i gave him a copy of this last record and he goes oh my god it sounds like pink floyd we got to do a record together <laughs> <laughs> so like, it wasn't just me then <laughs> yeah 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 so, so. It, i just found the the spatial elements and the arrangement was so brilliant and i'm wondering are you like a classically trained musician or is this something you do just by feel uh, well, uh, I mean, I, I've taken music lessons and I studied music in college and all this stuff. So I know a lot about how things fit together, but I think I, uh, mostly what I learned was from either, you know, YouTube, you yeah. know, I mean, certainly the pandemic, you know, all of a sudden I was going on YouTube all, every day, you know, to, 
to get inspired. You know, I would, when I was cutting drums, I was watching drummers. And then when I was cutting guitar, I was cutting guitar players. And then when I was mixing, I was, I was looking at mixers, you know, and what, you know, what their signal chain and how they stack their things and how they, you know, put certain elements together and then process them together, you know, yeah. and it, but also with a little side chain thing. I mean, not to get too technical, but yeah. No, I understand. So I understand. yeah, I, I've researched a lot, and I think that mostly what I've learned is is either from you know the engineers that I work with, the amazing people like uh, you know Jack Douglas and wow. uh, Martin Birch and uh, oh my God, uh, Jackson, all these guys that are you know just amazing, and you know you just sit there and you're just watching them, you know, and the, and I'd say, well, how do you, you do that? Oh, well, that's you know it's better to do it too little than too much, and then we stack them up, and you know all, everybody had their own little things that they did but so i i don't know i've learned from that too so just just those two names alone i can't even imagine being in the room with one of them <laughs> for <laughs> even for five minutes you know like martin birch like i mean that guy changed my life really the guy yeah, is one of the best too. record was what was rest in peace one of the best recording engineers in the world in yeah. history yeah yeah Tr true i mean with the you know the the the, the um Fleetwood Mac and Deep Purple. Oh my God! You know, and and Iron Maiden. After that, Iron Maiden. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. yeah. He he had a very, um, you know, it was very uh, like painting a soundscape, or almost like you know how you have really great artists and they talk about the negative space. That's what he would be looking at—the negative space, you know, to to sculpt, you know, the soundscape. Interesting. Yeah, Rena Bruce. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome, Paul. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, I mean, yeah, you know, I've done all these interviews. Everyone takes a different, uh, different uh, kind of veers off in a different direction. So you know, this is a uh, talking engineering here. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, totally. I, I, like you can trust our Chris to go down the gear porn road, and and you can trust me. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, 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 oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I'm a recording yeah, yeah. engineer, so it's like yeah, this is yeah, what I do yeah. every day. So I'm right. always interested in what I hear, and like sometimes I hear things, and I'm like, I'm not going to ask anything about the engineering because I don't want to know. <laughs> but with this, I definitely did want to know because it's just so like all encompassing. Like it's it it almost feels three dimensional, the song, and then. The other thing I found interesting was that you're using original lyrics for the song and you're kind of reimagining this track. And so I A-B'd them side by side and I was just like, I don't see any similarities to this at all other than I prefer the new one. I'm sorry, that's maybe me, but... Yeah, well, a lot of what I was doing with these these uh, reimaginos and imaginos two, and and I and I continue in imaginos three is trying to go back and remember exactly how the song, you know, started and what Sandy's original idea was because uh, you know as as time went by, you know, while I was doing it, I would I would be with the other guys and no, Sandy, we don't want to do it like that or whatever, you know, or. You know, or Sandy would have a different idea, you know, so he would change things. So uh, I wanted to go back and try and be as faithful to the original idea, you know, with, which is why I use the original lyrics. And, you know, on some other songs, I also uh, went back to original lyrics. And, uh, you know, some, I mean, because sometimes like with Odeed, Sandy was the one that wanted the change. He oh, was really like, too many words in the chorus. Yeah. So was it, know, is it like, kind of emotional going back and doing that? Like, does it kind of bring yes. up old emotions, good, bad, ugly, happy, sad, whatever? Yeah. Yeah. It's a trip. It's really, uh, uh, you know, I would get immersed in it, you know, and I would, I, I would, you know, uh, I would work on something like, Oh, deed, that's about the fourth or fifth version that I did. Oh, wow. So I didn't, I didn't, you know, I, I put, I put up the uh, original, right, from Blue Oyster Cult, and I started working with that, like just, okay, I'm going to play all the parts acoustic with a fretless bass and all this stuff. And it wasn't doing it for me. It was like, ah, this doesn't sound right. It, it just doesn't, 
it doesn't have that you know and i and i also thought about like how how sandy uh thought of the song you know it was we we played a, a gig in up in i don't know albany ish area i don't know if it's connectedy or it could have been some little right. town out over there you know and uh and sandy happened to be with us i guess maybe you know i don't know what exactly was the occasion it was after uh after the first album so we were going out on tour and of course sandy was going it might have been like the birds tour you know but uh you know our very first tour and i know that sandy was <laughs> there for all those gigs you know you know after wally he stopped going out on the road with us but in the beginning he was there all the time he was at the soundboard you know telling the guy what to do and he's like uh this guy <laughs> <laughs> nice but, but you know so we were going back to new york and on the way um the allman brothers were playing you know somewhere around there and sandy knew the promoter so we just drove in you know with our van and we all got out, we watched the Allman Brothers, and then we got back in the car and we we drove back to the city. And as we're going out of the venue, we went by the medical tent and there was all these people on stretchers and we're like, oh my God, you know, this probably everybody's ODing, you know? <laughs> and he's like, oh, OD'd on life itself. That should be a song. <laughs> That's cool. So, uh, yeah. That's funny. Did you ever learn? Did you ever learn when yeah, you were on the stretchers? No, <laughs> <laughs> that was enough. We made a song out of it. That, yeah, that, yeah. <laughs> that's enough. That's enough. Like high on life, yeah, yeah. that would be on life. I mean, that's basically just death. You know. Yeah. But yeah, and I, who knows? They probably didn't die. I don't think anybody died. But you know, they definitely took too much of whatever it was. You know, right. whether it was alcohol or acid or what. You know. It's back in <laughs> first tours, 1972, I guess, you know, wow. yeah. 71, wow. actually, the end of 71. So, uh, yeah. And, and then Sandy wrote the lyrics and I was like, whoa, okay. He went into a whole other, you know, he wasn't talking about drugs. He was talking about life itself. Right. You know, and, and all of this, you know, the mouth of the cave and, you know, all this this other stuff, which was, whoa, you know, like bringing a, who was it, Aristotle? Yeah. Or, uh, Plato the, into yeah, there. So, the allegory yeah. of the cave, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Plato, right? That's yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So how did you end up talking about alien conspiracies then? Oh, well, that was something we were all into, you know. Uh, you know, I mean, we we rented we had a band house in great neck and we rented a tv to watch the moon landing really you know a color tv yeah wow yeah just for that and then then of course we kept it because you know we discovered star trek <laughs> <laughs> so you know and and we would all be there sandy would be there we'd all you know sit down on the couch you know or whatever we had laying around and uh and watch uh you know captain kirk <laughs> so it was a lot of that a lot of you know interest in that kind of stuff and i think you know we all liked uh, you know sci-fi and horror and stuff like you know we liked godzilla you know that was another thing we'd watch whenever it was on we'd watch it again you know raymond burr yeah you know, in injected into this japanese thing <laughs> yes and those old black and white ones those old i don't know what that was the 40s yeah. i guess those were great yeah I used to watch yep. them with my grandfather and he used to just laugh the whole the whole way through it. That's all good movies. Yep. 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 You so said, yeah, so said, there was a lot of, of that, you know. Yeah. How does one rent a color TV? Oh, well, that's what you did because we had no money. We couldn't we certainly couldn't buy it. You yeah. know, so uh, we had to, we had to, we went to the rental place and, you know, there was rental places that would rent you a TV. My God, you that know? is I mean, so we cool. We didn't, we didn't, we had a TV, but we didn't have any phone. <laughs> well, was it one of those great big console TVs? Yes. I remember. The <laughs> yeah. Like a piece of furniture. Yeah. Yeah. It had rabbit ears too. <laughs> Man, that must've been like carrying an SVT up the stairs just to try to get it in the house. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, we had, we had the, uh, the acoustic 360 amps. So that was, yeah. 
Nice. It was yeah. the predecessor to the uh, SVT. Yeah. Heavy as hell. <laughs> yeah. what, do, what do you think? Which one is the most plausible, most believable conspiracy theory in your in your opinion? Uh, well, I would say that, you know, the government certainly uh, uh, like withholding any kind of evidence of, of uh, aliens, you know, is that's that's pretty much true you know and and i think that they probably did it in the interest of national security because they didn't know if it was aliens or the russians you know so you know we were we got all caught up in that mccarthy uh yeah era you know red scare bull crap you know i was just you know i i sing in a glee club and <clears throat> most of the guys are vets and the and the it's all male so it's most of them are veterans and we went to a we went to a, you know, a few of us, the, the executive committee went to a restaurant, uh, to a uh, Japanese restaurant after, afterwards, and there was this kid there who was currently a, a Marine, right? And so he got to talking with the guys. And when we, so afterwards, as we're walking back after we said, you know, goodbye to this guy, uh, we're talking about Vietnam and how, you know, what a shit show that was. Uh, pardon my French, but oh, you know, yeah, it was, it was, uh, you know, and, uh, and you know, that the guy I was talking to, he, he signed up to go over there and he still feels, oh, well, we did some good. And I'm like, no, we didn't. We backed the wrong pony. You know, <laughs> we drove right. gang, we drove, uh, Ho Chi Minh into the arms of the Chinese. He hated the Chinese and we drove him into the, uh, if you see Ken Burns, uh, uh vietnam uh series that mm -hmm. really i think that's very uh it's really covers all sides of the thing and and you can see how just by chance we ended up in this mess you know because kennedy went on vacation yeah <laughs> fair enough and, uh, all of a sudden we were immersed in this thing that you know the this mess that we inherited from the french so one thing I found really weird about that war was that um, Nixon negotiated through a back channel to keep that war going so he could win the election. That, that to me, uh, it's true, though. It's all written down. They just released the yeah. documents on it. Right. It blows and, and, my mind. Yeah, and at the time, it was a conspiracy theory. So there right. you go. Yeah, but and now it, it's true. Yeah. Yeah. I was just like, what that that happened like yeah. that i mean i myself my personal well, opinion yeah, about, yeah and this isn't the first or the last time when wars are being used to leverage political yeah yeah yeah, yeah. even uh, uh uh reagan you know with the uh, with the uh you know to, to to sabotage jimmy carter you know um yeah can't absolutely was, with the hostage situation yeah 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 so those records were just released as well yeah. yeah i mean my personal feeling is that i i am not i think that if you get too if you go too far down that conspiracy theory rabbit hole it's um it's bad for you psychologically oh absolutely oh yeah i think I, that I, I i i try to look take things at face value and but you know sometimes you get a murmuring or you get a feeling about you know geez this doesn't seem right this doesn't make sense right. Why, you know the whole like for instance a conspiracy theory that uh the government is responsible for you know covid you know right. i mean or or even that you would get these uh people saying well you know it's not really that many people that are dying you know they're inflating the numbers who in their right mind would do that? It just makes you look like an ass. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, who would inflate the numbers? The, it's impossible. Okay. The, it's more likely the other other way that they're, yeah. you know, minimizing the numbers. You know, oh, the hospitals, they want more money. No, the hospitals have plenty of money. Are they, you know, are they... I mean, it's a it's a rough business being in in the healthcare business, but it's also there's plenty of money there. There's plenty yeah. of money. They don't need to do this. They don't want to be overworked. They, you know, <laughs> it, it it didn't make any sense to me. I right. I mean, it could be that you know 
that it was that the Chinese were working on some sort of germ warfare and it just got out of out of control. I mean, that's that makes sense to me, but maybe not. You know, we get we're always having these crazy viruses and stuff, you know. Oh, yeah. And the one that makes me think about the healthcare thing is like no hospital wants to be seen, especially in the United States, with refrigerated trucks outside holding bodies. No. Like, that's not a good look for anybody. Like, <laughs> <laughs> that, yeah. that's, that's one that I know for sure was not not real. You know, I mean, even just, even, just, even Trump said, like, cut down on the testing. We want the numbers to go down. Right. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean that that makes sense, and you know, and I I would say the same thing. Maybe I don't know if I was him. <laughs> <laughs> if we just stopped yeah. testing, there wouldn't be so many cases. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Genius. Nice. Yeah, yeah. That yeah. we could have a pandemic for. I mean, I'm sick of it. I'm really. Oh my God, I'm so sick of it. You know, I sing in this glee club with these old guys. You know, I'm I'm like one of the younger guys, at least. For the time being, <laughs> <laughs> nice. You know what I mean. Boom, boom. But uh, so we we sing masked, and it's a drag trying to sing with a mask on your face. You know, and you, yeah. you're inhaling the mask. You know, when you after you sing a really long note, you need to take a big right. gulp of air. Yeah, I'm yeah. sick of it too, man. But I, I don't yeah. know. We're here. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. We can. Yeah. What do you have planned next? I mean, the uh, track is out, OD on Life Itself. Do you have other singles you can plan on releasing, or what's the plan going forward from here? Uh, I don't know. We've rehearsed, we've released two singles, OD on Life Itself and Independence Day, and we're working on a video for that. But, um, and I don't know. I, I there are other songs on the record that I I personally love. I mean, I think that um, "Shadow of California" to me is like it's just a delightful song. I love singing it. I love playing it. I, I it's it's got this like really super dark feeling, but it's also spacey and not too too dense until it gets to the chorus, and then you know, then it's the kitchen sink moment. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> everything in it <laughs> yeah 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 and uh you know and i got this young guy playing drums on it you know who's uh you know who's uh, he you know he's the virtuoso i mean i've seen him play before and i was like you know hey i gotta get you on my record and he's like okay yeah that's cool i'm like but i uh, i only have one song that needs a drum part he's like, <laughs> sure you know show me what it is. Well, you know he came and did his thing and of course it's so spacey that you know he could really show off right. a bit well that's all drummer show off yeah that's all i've got Rena, you got anything else no this has been such a pleasure i'm, I'm sorry i'm gonna have to run to a bus and to the pharmacy to get some cough medicine <laughs> and painkillers for my sick kid oh. but <laughs> oh man i'm a little distracted excuse me but <clears throat> it's the mom instincts you can't help it but um <laughs> this this has been super interesting. I could have picked your brain about the conspiracy stuff for, for hours and hours. And of course, like when we get to the good stuff, that's when my computer freezes. Right. But, <laughs> and I'm sure it's not an accident. It's a conspiracy. <laughs> it's, you're being censored by China. <laughs> that's right. For sure. Right. For sure. That was smooth and lovely. Thank you. Thank you so much for taking the time. That was a great that conversation. Was, that was silky. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. I'm all like goosebumpy so, here now. <laughs> next year we we're gonna have Imaginos three, and it's gonna be it's gonna be like it like this, but more. Okay, more. please come back. Yeah, yes, and if fans want to oh, find you, can you give us your social security number? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, that too. Yeah, <laughs> they'll definitely uh, find yeah. you. <laughs> so, so uh, on. Uh, Facebook and uh, YouTube, it's uh, Altbush, A L T B O U C H. And my website is albertbouchard.net. All right. Once again, thank you for All taking right. the time, my friend. That's it. I appreciate it. And please come thank back you. next year. This Be is well. great. Yeah, this was a good time. Yeah. We'll see you next okay. year and have Stay. a good rest of the day. Take care. You too. Bye. 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 Bye.